I was born in the backwoods of Alabama, underneath the last toenail of the foothills of the Appalachians. And I come from uh, half hillbillies and half rednecks. And you don't necessarily want to breed those two because you get non-binary every time. But no, um, there was nothing positive about being feminine reflected in the backwoods. The only time I saw someone like me being celebrated was on television. I saw one particular person, uh, Jimmy James, on the Phil, Don Phil Donahue show as Marilyn Monroe. And here was this extremely feminine person just like me, but rather than being laughed at or punished or, or um, bullied, they were being celebrated and given applause and being looked at as an amazing thing. And I s literally said to myself, I, I can do that. I was performing in Birmingham, Alabama for several years before moving to California. And during that time, I would be part of the Gay Pride in Birmingham. And we actually would march uh, through the streets uh, at a time when a lot of my friends didn't want to do that because there were television cameras there and their families would be able to see them uh, on the local television and that's and that they were very fearful uh, for the loss of family just from being on television at a gay pride march um, and as time went by I did get noticed by the Birmingham News who did a story on Maximiliana and the drag scene of Birmingham in like 1995. And it was actually a very positive story to come from the Birmingham News, which is not known as a progressive newspaper, especially at that time. And that story had my pictures as Maximiliana, my original name printed, and that is the statewide newspaper in Alabama. And that is how my family found out about Maximiliana. They read it in the paper. It was a wonderful experience because the people who I had been performing for, the community in Birmingham were so proud. People literally framed that and put it on their wall. I mean, these people, it meant so much that there was at least a, a little bit of a glimmer of hope that our community was having a positive light shined, shone upon it. My personal family, however, took it quite differently. As a matter of fact, um, my mother said she was too old fashioned for my lifestyle. And that's pretty much the last time we spoke. Um, it was right after that article came out. The first singing group I was in was called the Yellow Creek Boys, and we were all like 10, 11, 12, something like that. And we went around to churches in the South and sang harmony. I have always sang alto. I've always sang the upper parts. Uh, when I was older, I learned there were drag shows in Birmingham where people were lip syncing and making money winning contests. And my thought was, wait a minute, I can sing those exact same songs. Those people are lip syncing. I needed to make a living. So I'll go and 
sing these songs these people are lip syncing and I will win these contests and the very first night that's what happened I went I sang I won everything was great I thought wow I found a new thing to do but the next week not only did I not win I didn't place and then the next week it was just the same and, and everyone there was, was turned was very catty and, and rude to me and I'm like why are these people hating on me? I don't understand. So I asked one of the performers one night, what's going on? Why do you guys hate me so much? And they said to me, because this is a drag show and we don't like when women come into our shows and take our money. And I said, what are you talking about? And they said, you're female. This is a drag show. You sing. That's nice. Go sing in a straight club. And I literally grabbed my breast form and pulled it out and showed my They're like, what are you talking about? And they were like, what? I developed a number where I sing a lot of feminine songs, Debbie Gibson, Madonna, Tiffany. And in the very end, I generally sit down in a chair and I'm talking and then I'll say, and I'll sing one more for you. And I sing Bobby McFerrin down in the basement, way down here. And everybody just lost it. I mean, lost it. And this was designed for other drag entertainers. That's why I was doing this. I had no idea where it would take me and what it would become. When I came to Los Angeles, I got on the phone and I started calling all of these clubs to say, I'm looking for a drag show. So I called the Queen Mary and they said, oh, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't audition. Uh, you can come and dance, audition to dance on the poles in the back if you want. And I said, you know, I'm not really a dancer, but I do appreciate that. I'm a singer. As soon as I said singer, they said, oh, you're a singer? Well, come to karaoke. Because if you come and sing at karaoke, the owner will see you. So sure enough, I went that week to the karaoke and I met the owner and he said, come tomorrow to audition for me. I pulled out my old number that I was doing in Alabama where I dropped my voice. And the moment I got to that spot in the number, they stopped the music, everything was done, you're hired. We want you in the show tonight. You're gonna do that number in the show tonight. I wound up being in that show for six years. They would not allow me to take that number out. So sometimes it's a good thing to not know what you're doing. I'm very surprised I survived my childhood. But I'm very proud that I did because now, the whole reason I'm sitting here right this moment it's because I really want to make it easier for someone else coming down the line. Because you know what? There's nothing wrong with being feminine. There's nothing wrong with being who you are. There's nothing wrong with not being male or female. That's okay. And it's okay for me to say, I want you to call me they. Because anything else is not correct.